Hey everybody, today we are going to talk about exponential shifts, um, kind of finish up our exponential unit here. And exponential shifts are going to go right alongside with uh, absolute value shifts and linear shifts. All the shifts, hopefully you guys are starting to see this look very similar. So um, let's say we have our basic uh, exponential function. Uh, let's say we have f of x equals 3 times 2 to the x. Right, where we know that this number in front is going to be like our y-intercept. That's like our initial value, our first uh, number, if you will. And then this is our rate. So it looks like this time, every time, it's going to double. Um, so um, what kind of shifts could we see here? Um, yeah, cool. So first off, um, remember when we threw a negative in here, so let's say we had g of x, which is the same thing except for this is negative 3. That negative, um, if you remember our absolute value function, was a v, and it flipped it over, right? That's what it's still going to do. This is going to be a um, reflection over the x-axis. So that negative, if we see a negative in front of that coefficient there, um, that's just going to take our graph. And so this y-intercept here was 3 in the original function. Down here in g of x, it's going to be negative 3. So it's going to look like this and do that. That's what this shift uh, or this negative here is going to do. Normally, f of x would go through this point, like so, and we see that this is just going to be that flipped over the x-axis and um, be the same idea. So that negative is still going to flip my whole thing. It's just going to reflect it over the x-axis and go from there. Okay? So there's the negative. Um, what about if we did some vertical shifts? So the vertical shifts are going to be on the outside over here. All right, so if we have a plus 7, uh, that's going to shift up 7, just like it did before. And let's say we had h of x, which is the same thing, except for it's minus 2. That's going to shift down 2. So when we see the number on the outside, at the end of our number, that's going to be a vertical shift. It's either going to go up if it's plus, or it's going to go down if it's uh, minus here. Just like it was before, right? So I could graph the my original. Um, trying to make it look good. Let's see here. So the original looks like uh, you know goes through three. So it looks like that, right? That would be f of x. g of x, well, we're going to do the same thing, only this point is going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So here's my y-intercept. And usually what you can do when you guys are looking at these, this the y-intercept is kind of always the point that I use when I'm shifting and I'm trying to graph it. Um, you know, I just kind of move it whenever I'm supposed to move it, and then the rest of the function just needs to look the same. So the important points, right, we know it's growth, we know the y-intercept, and we know where the asymptote is, right? So if the asymptote here was at zero and the y-intercept was three, that means here, that would be one, two, three away. So that means if I go one, two, three away, this is now my new asymptote. So 
So that would be that just shifted up, right? It's never gonna reach, uh, maybe it'd be a little bit flatter here. It's hard when it's not like right there for you, you know? But as long as you show that you kind of know what you're talking about here, it's not gonna really reach uh, whatever that is. Seven? Six, seven, yeah, seven. So um, the asymptote and the y-intercept are gonna be as far away as they were in the original one. That's a really good mental um, check for you. Same thing down here. If we graph this one that shifted down to, I'm just gonna take this point, go down one, two. It's gonna cross there. And that means my asymptote would be down here at negative two. And it's gonna increase from there. So obviously I didn't do a great job. Those two look pretty good. That one's uh, you know, a little, a little cockeyed maybe a little bit. But that's enough to show me that you understand where it's shifting to if you have to graph it, okay? Let's talk about horizontal shifts. So if we're shifting left or right, it is going to be up here in the exponent this time. So if I see a number that I'm adding or subtracting up here in the exponent, that's going to make it shift left or right. And just like before with horizontal shifts, this is gonna be opposite. So this up here is gonna be shift right eight units. Because it's opposite sign. So that minus eight is gonna make it shift right. Likewise, if I had h of x, and maybe it was to the x plus um, three, that's going to shift it left. Opposite sign. Um, horizontal shift's always opposite sign, right? So uh, again, when I'm graphing those, if I wanna check out what this is gonna look like, um, I don't mean to take up a bunch of time graphing or anything, but uh, just to kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm still gonna use that idea of my y-intercept. So my original is here, look like this. If I wanna shift this one, uh, let's do left three. I'm just gonna count over one, two, three. So here's my point. And the asymptote doesn't change if we're just going left to right, it's just gonna change how far over it was when it started. So I'm just gonna still move from this y-intercept point, left to right, whatever it needs me to move. And that, using that y-intercept, uh, one of those key points, is um, the easiest way to move these for sure. Because we have one really good point that we know about and then we can kind of manipulate it either left or right or up or down or flip it over the y axis or the x axis uh, if it's negative, all that stuff, right? So these are going to work a lot like the ones we already know how to do. I think this will be okay for you guys. Uh, let me know if you have any questions or if you have any problems and we can totally uh, talk about it. Okay? All right. Peace out.